Hey, what's up? Uh, in this video, we're going to continue uh, with our beat making. Uh, we're going to stick to my template, uh, just because by now you should be a little bit more comfortable with the UI. This is my template, um, and you really should create your own uh, once you get comfortable with uh, things you use all the time, uh, wh which is um, you know EQ8 and a compressor uh, on each channel and color code everything. And if you have anything kind of neat, just, you know, attach it in, like machine or um, anything you have. So, uh, so what we're going to do uh, is I'm just going to get a kick and uh, drop it in. And one thing I should mention now is Ableton automatically... Uh, prevents uh, clicking so it'll like kind of roll off it'll fade in uh, your sample so you right click on the sample show fades and right there uh, it rolled off this is a volume kind of automation uh, but it's within the clip and it prevents uh, like a vocal hit from or any kind of anything from clicking uh, say like a vocal that you cut in um, and it starts playing like in the middle of its waveform it'll click which sucks uh, so it kind of automatically protects it from that uh, there's an option to disable it but you really shouldn't disable it you should keep it enabled but for your kicks you want the click so you just move that over and uh, yeah that's not much of a difference there that's automatically right move that over Right, and then now you have your click of your kick. So, uh, where's that kick I had? Okay, we have a kick here. Super fun, happy times. So we have a kick here. We'll delete that. We will stretch it out. Control D, one, two, three, four. Well, three times, we have four. We loop, and then there we have our loop. And we'll set it to 125. And then I'll set this to none. So. Right. So we have our kick now. So what we're going to do, um, is you're going to drop in an EQ8. Uh, and then what you're going to do is this will take you years to master. And maybe I'll have a master by the time I'm 40. Uh, I'm no exception. I don't think anyone's the exception unless you're like seven years old and you've been using the same EQ your whole life. Uh, but what I want you to do is experiment with what doing this does. Uh, it'll kind of boost the volume and the frequency that you kind of select. So what we'll do is we'll play the kick and I'll show you kind of what it does. Right, so this is a bell curve, um, and what you can do is you can raise it to boost the high frequencies in your kick, and you can raise this one to boost the low end, and you can get some muddy effects. Right, so you got clipping going on there, or kind of soft clipping, uh, and it doesn't sound too great. Uh, and as you like, go on uh, you'll kinda slowly get what the EQ is doing basically you have each of these numbers is a pull you click on it so it's highlighted and then you have frequency and you can drag it around and then you can adjust the curve so you can make it like really resonant or just massive right and that's basically what an EQ does it's, it solves the frequency conflict so say, you know, if I have a kick here, the exact same one, right? We got some like fuzziness going on. And if you have a bass there, there's no exception. So what I'll do is I'll add a bass line. There, I'll add this, baby steps. So if you have like a bass line or you programmed one in with your keyboard and you're going crazy, Right. You 
kick is disappearing. So what we're going to introduce is something called sidechain uh, compressed compression. Sidechain compression. That's the one word I can't say. I could say aluminum. I can say aluminium. I can say everything. But it's like the ultimate tongue twister. She sells seashells by the seashore. Let's just see if I'm actually recording. Yes, I am. Okay. So you have your kick and your bass, and they're not sitting in harmony. And this is an introduction to solving uh, frequency conflict. So two ways to solve uh, frequency conflict. Frequency conflict is when uh, two sounds in involving the same kind of spectrum right here. See, this is the spectrum overlay. Right? Is the same with the kick. They're kind of in the same spectrum. And there's a way you can do it. You can EQ that out. So now you have the bass and the kick uh, well together, but you lost the bass of the bass. You want that. So what you can do is something called sidechain compression. There, I said it. Sidechain compression, um, and that's with a compressor. Uh, and you click on this little tiny arrow here, and then you select sidechain. Now this is like your beginning to routing. And routing in Ableton is not that intimidating. Uh, it's basically just sending uh, audio from one channel to the other. Uh, the compressor can, okay, basically, okay, I'm going to kind of briefly explain what a, what a compressor does with an example of the kick. So say you have your kick here. And what this is, is this is uh, the volume, right? I'll turn that off. This is, is the volume, and what uh, this is is the threshold, and this meter is the volume of the kick unaffected. So it's it's basically any kind of meter on a DJ mixer. So say, for example, if you had a little helper in your studio, and he had his finger on the volume button of the kick on the console, right? And every time the kick got loud, he turned the volume down. That's basically what a compressor is doing. It's automatic uh, volume reduction once it gets over a certain part. And you'll hear that when you bring the threshold down. The threshold is the amount. The, the threshold is um, the marker kind of thing. So right now it's at zero, unaffected. We bring, we bring it down. So right now the ga this gain reduction is how far they're turning the volume down, right? your little studio helper, right? So, don't worry about the ratio yet. We have attack and release, okay? We'll see it here. This if you if you go to this option here, this one, same thing. This marker is a threshold and you can see the threshold right there. It's the same thing as this threshold. So, bring it down. You can manually see there's someone automating the volume automatically and this is uh, gain reduction. So, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so what you're gonna do? Oh yeah. So you have attack and release. The attack is say if I snap my fingers in front of your eyes, the sound, like me snapping my fingers and then you closing your eyes, is reaction time, right? So basically, the attack is the reaction time. If I snap my fingers in front of your eyes. This is my own way of explaining it. No one explains it like this. So if I snap my fingers in front of your eyes, you blink, right? And you blink. The human reaction time is like a fourth of a second. So I don't know. So the, the reaction time, think of attack as reaction time. And you can hear that now. If it's super fast reaction time, the kick disappears, right? Because the, the helper your your studio helper is turning the volume down so quickly right but if his reaction time is a little bit low or is a little bit longer like me snapping my fingers and then you waiting a second and then closing your eyes you know you got a problem with your mind but if you increase the reaction time no if you decrease the reaction time you get the transient of the kick and this is um, why compressors are used so now you have 
you have the click of the kick but you still have you still have the reduction you can increase that too right so you have that and think of the re the release is how quickly after you close your eyes you open them again so so if we increase the release you can see it goes down and the more you increase it like the more release you have the the slower it takes for the volume to come back up right so so we have a oh wait that's attack so we have attack and we'll have a super long release look at how long that fucker takes <laughs> so that's a slow like down and then you're up slowly so what is the point of all of this oops the point of all this is for overheads on drums so if you have like a like a badass drummer and you have the mics that hang down from the ceiling they're called overheads um, when he would hit the snare the snare would muddy up the entire mix um, and, and that would suck so uh, you would have you'd want to have the slap of the snare but then the snare has this elongated like whew, after it after it like a snare drum you know so what they would do is they would have an attack to get the the slap of the snare but then the afterwards uh, would be quieter and uh how the human ear works is um uh, the human ear can't pick up that well the difference between a loud sound and a quiet sound so yeah so basically it's you still get so what's, what this is doing on and off is you're losing some of the volume but if you have a slight a slight bit it makes it seem more punchy you know that's a bad example but for like snares and other kind of stuff you're good to go now makeup uh, automatic makeup gain is why everything is so loud these days so just review EQ learn that uh, play around with it up and down see what it does it molds the sound the compressor think threshold see what it does load in a snare uh, see what it does attack and release attack and release only focus on that uh, ratio don't worry about that and kind of figure what it's doing what it's doing is it's giving you more headroom it's getting rid of the loud sounds but it's kind of smoothing it all out so what it's doing you gotta if you go on my channel and you uh, search compressor explain visually I explain it kind of well that way and it's positive you check it out now makeup gain is a way to make something louder so what you're doing is you're uh, reducing the, the the gain automatically lowering the volume of it right but as he's doing that he's lowering the volume and then boosting the volume kind of at the same time and what that's what that's doing is that squishing the sound and it's called automatic makeup gain makeup gain means automatic volume up so it might seem like that won't do anything but it does quite a bit right so when he when you reduce the volume it boosts the volume and I explain it visually and I explain it very well in another video so just yeah focus on the compressor and EQ8 so what we're gonna do is we're going to sidechain now so sidechain you're taking a, a, uh, a signal not from the audio itself you're taking it from another piece of audio this sidechain and this channel is taking audio input the audio input from this one so what's actually happening is the kick is reducing the volume in this so you get side chain compression right and we'll see that now so no input yeah so we go side chain input 15 which is where the kick is so no gain reduction now we have it's 
There's no option for makeup gain because it won't work. So now we have side chaining. So now we play them all together. Everything has its own space. That could be done with a lot of sounds. That could be done with everything. And it's all centered around your kick. Okay. Uh, and I believe that should do it. That's more of a complicated version effect. That's an introduction to EQing and a compressor and sidechain compressing. Um, compression and EQing is a very, very large subject. Uh, but if you have the basics down, uh, basically it makes things louder or it can make things punchier but overusing it doesn't really work so when you're using a compressor focus on threshold attack release reaction time and how long it takes for you to open your eyes again and the makeup gain and uh, experiment what that does and if you want to know if the compressor is doing anything look at this gain reduction it'll tell you <laughs> And using a compressor on anything will increase its volume, but it'll squish it at the same time when you're using makeup gain. If you use no makeup gain, it'll give you more headroom at the end. And headroom is uh, room in your audio. So say, so you, you look at this waveform of this, and you say, oh, it's bouncing around a lot in terms of its volume, right? I want it to be more uniform, so it sounds kind of smoother. So what we'll do, I'll turn off that. We'll add another compressor in there. Turn off makeup gain. So what that's doing is it's kind of taming the peaks. So you a compressor can be used on everything. Think of a like a bass guitar. Say if you if you slap it like a really really hard like a loud slap on a bass. I'm not sure how you do that, but you slap it, the string. Uh, that'll be louder. But then if you're kind of, I don't know what do you call it, doodling, or whatever, it's not as it's not as loud. But what you want to do is smooth it out, and it's basically all all it is is it's someone next to you with a knob that controls the volume is just turning it right and it's just you know attack release and uh makeup gain if you want but yeah so here we go we have something that sounds a lot smoother and that's your introduction to eq and stuff take care hope you enjoyed it uh give me a like and a comment give me a comment if this sucks Give me a comment if uh, my teaching style is okay. Okay, that's it.